Yeah, thank you all so much for uh, joining in. Um, I'm Frederik. I will give uh, a talk tonight about how to connect and also is online enough for real connection? A few months ago, I moved to Maastricht. Uh, I was doing a job where I was yeah, sitting a lot on a desk and um, was just sitting behind my computer and uh, doing a lot of stuff over there. And um, I was longing for yeah, just meeting up with people. And um, I was looking forward to do some new stuff. So I applied for a function as a student worker for international students in Maastricht. And I was really looking forward to finally meet uh, people here. But just one week after we moved here, um, the intelligent lockdown started to happen. So all the plans I had, I couldn't do. Um, and before the time, I never heard about Zoom, uh, Discord, I never used Teams. They were all new stuff for me, new things for me. Um, so for me, it was really yeah, finding out what's going on now and how do I do the things I wanted to do. And it was really a disappointment not face, meeting up and facing uh, face to face with other people, uh, meeting with students. And a moment like this, I'm really longing for uh, just go to the Vrijthof here in Maastricht and just sitting on terrace and just drinking uh, something with some friends and just shaking hands and um, it just put a hand on the shoulder of someone who needs some comfort in some way. Um, but at this moment, it is yeah, impossible. But I think we can be really grateful that we can use Zoom and Facebook at this moment um, yeah, to hang out with other people. But I also heard this week a new term, uh, Zoom fatigue. Uh, it means that people are getting tired because of Zoom. Um, a lot of people are exhausted exhausted because of it. Uh, I hear a lot of friends who are saying, yeah, I don't want to meet up um, during the evenings because I'm already too much online um, and I'm just feeling, yeah, very, very tired. And there are different reasons for this. And one of the reasons is because our brains are not capable of uh, yeah, comprehending all the information. We're used to just meeting up with people and then we can see um, the nonverbal signals somebody's sending and we can hear the voice. But if you cannot combine them uh, by a screen, and then it's really difficult to stay in contact and to re really focus on everything. And also on the same moment, a lot of people are in, uh, on your screen. So it's really difficult for our brains to focus. And also read that um, a lot of people just want to show good on a camera. Um, so it, we always have the idea that we have to show a good image of ourselves. And all those things are exhausting. Um, so this can be a reason why we are yeah, exhausted because of it. But I'm really grateful that you are here, that you're joining this event. And um, yeah, I want to take a close look on what do we really need. Because I think we're all longing for a moment that we can just get yeah, touch each other again, meet up with each other again. Um, there was an, I think, disturbing but also interesting uh, research done in the 1940s uh, by N.A. Spitz. He was an, uh, uh, yeah, a scientist. He was looking for what's going on in the psychoanalysts analytics. and um, he did investigation to uh, young babies and children. And in one of his investigations, he had a group of uh, 20 babies and another group of 20 babies. And the first group of 20 ba uh, babies um, they had also carers, but the carers were not allowed to touch them, um, to laugh at them, uh, to hug them. They were, not a, they were only allowed to feed them, um, also some washing, not more than, than needed. And for the rest, they left them alone. And it was a complete sterile room, so they couldn't get sick. The second group had carers who were allowed to, to hug them, um, to laugh at them, to talk with them and so on, just the things we normally do with the baby. And after four months, they stopped this investigation um, because there were many people, many of the children, the babies uh, died from the first group. Uh, almost half of them died and some died after the uh, research has, was finished. Um, so it, it was showing that we all need some attention. 
And René Spitz concluded, we need, all need affection. And if we don't receive that affection, it's really hard for us to survive. So in the baby, we can already see we need affection. And in times like this, it can be difficult to have that affection. And to really have the feeling like I can connect with people. And this is the first thing I want to discuss with you. Uh, I want to discuss two things to, tonight. And the first thing is about what is the problem at this time? Um, why is it difficult to connect? And I certainly want to focus also on loneliness because I think that's one of the main problems we're facing at the moment. A few uh, weeks ago, there was a uh, talk of uh, the king of the Netherlands, Willem Alexander, and he said the following, the loneliness virus is now one of the greatest, is now one of the greatest challenges we face. He was saying that at this moment, when we also have a corona crisis, there also will be much more loneliness. And loneliness was already there before the corona crisis. Uh, around a year ago, there was uh, in the Netherlands, hashtag Eenzame Jongeren, hashtag Lonely Young People. And well, a lot of young people, people from uh, your high school and also students, were showing on Instagram and Facebook, I feel lonely. I've got the feeling I'm not seen by other people. So there was just a cry for see me. And it's also done a lot of research on uh, loneliness with students. And a lot of students are yeah, struggling with this. Around 10% of the students um, said that they often for a long time felt very lonely during their student time. It's 10% is really a high number. And because of this, they are struggling with sleeping problems, uh, depressions and addiction. So I think there's a lot of things going on there. And all the experts are also saying at this moment, yeah, the percentage will grow. More people will get lonely. More students will feel lonely because of the corona, because of your sitting at home, and because of all those things. And there is an uh, interesting thinker who thought a lot about this topic, um, is Dirk de Wachter. And he's, he is a psychiatrist from Belgium, and um, he met up with a lot of uh, young people, students, um, and he had conversations with them about the problems. And he's saying that in every conversation he had with a young person, the problem of loneliness is one of the issues they are dealing with. It's one of the things they're struggling with. And every conversation is coming back. And he's saying it is, it's a paradox. How is it possible that so many yeah, young people in the prime of their life are not, um, are not capable of dealing with this. And certainly in a time where it's so easy to get in contact with people, the people are struggling with who they are and what they are doing and um, looking for connection. And one of the quotes uh, he said, in one of the quotes he wrote the following, and I believe that meeting face to face is prerequisite for human, be human beings. Seeing and holding one another, shaking hands, feeling the touch of a person's skin, looking into each other's eyes. Those are the bare necessities of human existence. So the, the Wachter is saying, at this moment, um, we're missing the bare necessities of our human existence. We have to meet up face to face with other people. Um, that's something we're longing for as human beings. That's something we need to meet up with other people. And he's saying that one of the main problems in our Western society is that often we are too much focused on the individual. We're too much focused on me, me, me. Um, it's all about yeah, getting what, what we need, what I need. And he's saying in, in a society that's focused so much, much on the growth of you as an individual, um, connectedness and living together will get under pressure, will get more difficult. And certainly in times like this, we can maybe experience it even more. Um, are we still capable of letting other people in our lives to connect with other people? Or is our life maybe about only about me? 
or maybe us in a small group. And I really love at this moment to see around, uh, you know, a lot of windows, uh, the BS standing to support the health workers. And also in different places to see phone numbers, people saying, if you need some groceries, I can bring them to you. Uh, I want to help out. It's awesome to see people looking out for other people, um, looking how can we support other people. And I really hope that, that we can continue with this. Also, if the coronavirus is over, that we can stay still capable of focusing on other people and um, looking for how can we help other people. I hope also that the coronavirus can teach us that. Um, but also in the same moment, it's, it's a difficult time for a lot of us. Um, you can struggle with this. Maybe you've seen it with people around you, or maybe you, you yourself are struggling with this topic. Uh, you're feeling lonely, you're feeling disconnected. I found an interesting quote from um, Holly Sykes. He's the singer of Bring Me the Horizon. And he said in one of his songs, can you feel my heart? I'm scared to get close and I hate being alone. Can you feel my heart? I think this is a longing uh, Dirk de Wachter is also describing. Are we still capable of letting people come to our hearts? We're longing for it. We, long, we are longing for it to be seen. But at the same time, are we capable of showing our hearts to other people? And Oli is saying that, that he's scared to get close. He's afraid to show himself. But at the same time, he doesn't want to be alone. He wants to be connected with other people. And Oli struggled with depression for a very long time. Um, he had a lot of health issues in this. And his, in this song, he's really describing what's going on. His struggle in life, his focus, um, what he was looking for. And maybe you... you recognize some of those things in your own life. Um, but I think for a lot of us, it's really difficult to show this kind of things because it's vulnerable. It can be difficult to show all those feelings, to be open about how we're feeling. But I think it's something we need to get closer. And for my second point, I want to uh, take a closer look on how does it feel to be disconnected? How does it feel? to be uh, an outsider. And for this, I want to uh, read with you a story. It's an ancient story. Um, you can find it in an ancient biography of Jesus. And I think it, can, it shows us the, the struggle we're in, um, where we can be in at this moment, but also in all the moments in our life. So um, I want to take a look with you on, in this, if you let me. Um, It starts with, a large crowd followed and pressed around him, and him is Jesus. And a woman was there who, was, who had been subject to bleeding for 12 years. And first, some, some context. In a Jewish society, if you were bleeding um, as a woman, it meant you were unclean. It meant you were not allowed to do anything. Um, it was seen as a contagious disease. So the bed you were sleeping in, uh, the chair you were sitting on, the people you were touched, they all became unclean and they needed a ritual washing to get clean again. So if she was bleeding for 12 years, then for 12 years she was living abandoned by other people. She was not allowed to meet up with other people. The social distancing was already there for 12 years in her life. And I'm complaining about that I can't go to the Freithof for two months. This woman was already struggling with this for 12 years. That's a really long time. And just imagine for yourself, if you were this lady, and you're seeing everybody is just, yeah, standing far away from you, already taking social distance. And slowly your friends and family are leaving you alone because they want to get unclean because of you. For 12 years, she was living probably outside the village. She was not allowed to live inside the village. And there she is living on her own, without work, without a love life, without friends, without anything of those things. This is the, the image you have to have when we read about this lady. And then the story continues. 
She has suffered a great deal under the care of many doctors and has spent all she had. Yet instead of getting better, she grew worse. When she heard about Jesus, she came up behind him in the crowd and touched his cloak because he thought, if I just touch his clothes, I will be healed. Immediately her bleeding stopped and she felt in her body that she was freed from her suffering. At once Jesus realized that power had gone out from him. He turned around in the crowd and asked, who touched my clothes? You see the people crowding are against you, his disciples answered. And yet you can ask who touched me? But Jesus kept looking around to see who had done it. Then a woman, knowing what had happened to her, came and fell at his feet and trembling with fear, told him the whole truth. He said to her, daughter, your faith has healed you. Go in peace and be freed from your suffering. In his story, read about this lady who was longing for 12 years to be connected again. She was lonely for 12 years. Um, you can even speak of the de derealization. She was put outside reality. People around her didn't like her anymore, didn't want to uh, continue living with her anymore. She was not part of reality anymore. She was abandoned, alone, and avoided. And she tried to trust uh, more people in her life. She trusted the doctors, but the doctors even made it worse. Um, so it was a really difficult situation she was living in. And then she was probably also thinking, well, what can I do with my life? She was feeling abandoned, alone, and avoided. And probably she could sing with Ollie, can you feel my heart? I'm scared to get close, but I'm afraid to be alone. Can you feel my heart? And she's looking for some help somewhere. And then secretly she's, she's heard about Jesus and she's going to him. And she's afraid to ask. A lot of people are asking Jesus things at the moment. But she just touches his cloak and then runs away again. She doesn't want to be seen. She just wants to hide away and just see what happens. But then something strange happens. Jesus is saying, saying who touched me? In a crowding mass, Jesus asking, who touched me? And all the people around are thinking, you're crazy. A lot of people are touching you at this moment. But then he's repeating it again, who touched me? And the woman has the feeling like, he's talking to me. I have to go there. And probably she was hiding her face because he didn't want to be seen. Maybe people know her and were thinking, this is a person I should be far away from. But she enters the circle around Jesus and kneels before his feet. And probably she was hiding her face and then she's telling her story. And it's good to know that, that the people around her, this is not a loving community, but it's a judging community. It's an unloving community. And this woman shares her story and tells about her bleeding for 12 years. And probably that is a moment that all the people around her take a step further back, uh, more than one and a half meter distance. They are afraid for this woman. They want to, don't want to get them clean. They want to have, don't want to have the contagious disease. But why? Why did Jesus put her in such a humiliating position? What could be the reason? I think because of, I, I think because he wanted to offer something more than only healing. Jesus wanted to put her back into reality, back in social life. He's putting him back into a social circle. Um, he's just undoing the derealization. De he's making her back, putting her back into reality. She's seen again. People can again touch her. And I think that's something he offers. He wants to connect her again with people around her, but also with God himself. Jesus claimed to be God. And with this, a relationship started. 
But what has this story to say to us in this time? Um, will maybe all this loneliness will end after Corona? Will we all be connected again? I don't think so. I think because of there is a deeper, this problem at a deeper level at the moment. Um, Dirk de Wachter was describing this. This as we have struggles with living together and connectedness. There is a problem at a deeper level already. 10% of students were already lonely before this event and found it difficult to connect. So we have to take a deeper look on what's going on in our society. And maybe if we compare it a little bit to uh, the society around a woman, you think about the circle standing around her. A lot of them were probably judging her, were angry probably because she was in the middle of the crowd and maybe she spread her uncleanness to other people. This was an unloving group and she was abandoned by those people. She was not allowed to be part of that group anymore. And maybe you've also experienced something like that in your life. Got the feeling like, I want to be part of groups, I want to meet up with people. Um, but I find it hard or it, I felt disappointment in those kind of situations because I didn't find the love I was looking for. I didn't find the connection I was looking for. But maybe also if you think about the story, um, you can think about situations in your own life that you maybe put people aside, that you maybe were part of an unloving group was not open for other people. And I think these are things that is not the way it should be. And in the Bible, those things are described as uh, a sin. Things that are not right, things are not the way it should be. Things that are not out of love. And I think that happens when we have a lot of focus on me, 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 like Dick de Wachter is describing. And probably we can we experience something like that when we're sitting at home in this um, quarantine time. When we meet up with only our roommates, only our family back home. Uh, people expect there will be a lot of babies in nine months. But also a lot of people expect that there will be much more divorces because of Corona. Because people have to live more together. And it can be hard to share your life to really connect, to be really open about things going on in your life. And I think this story make, can make us think about this. And if we see loneliness around us, if you see the loneliness of that woman, I think we all need to think, well, how can we help other people? How can we serve other people? How can we put people back into community? And with this, it's not only I think a personal problem, but I think it's a problem for us as a society. I think it's something as a society we need to think about. How can we look out for those people who are not connected? How can we connect with other people? Can I see the student who doesn't look like have, has some, a lot of connections at the moment? But maybe you're asking, what, what has this Jesus maybe to do with this? How can that help? I think what's interesting is in Jesus is when you read those, his stories, you will see that he is breaking down the social distance. He's letting people coming nearby, like this woman. This woman was allowed to touch him. And also, you, you can see all the stories in the ancient biographies of Jesus that he is yeah, just letting people who, are, who have a contagious disease touch him. And that's what Jesus is doing. Jesus came to this earth to take up him, upon him uh, all the things that are wrong in our life, all our brokenness, all our struggles, and all our sins, all the moments we disappoint other people. Maybe when, when we have, have abandoned other people. Jesus came to this world to put it on him. And he took this with him through the cross. And on the cross, where he was crucified, he suffered the ultimate isolation, the ultimate loneliness. 
He was abandoned by friends and family and his followers. He was just hanging there alone. He even felt abandoned by God. But he did this because of you, because of me. Because he came to this earth to restore the connection between God and us again. And also between us as people. And after a few days, when he died on the cross, people said that they have seen him again. And people have written down eyewitness accounts of this, that he was really alive again. And if you, you can check that out, you can investigate. But maybe the most surprising thing is that many people in this world, uh, like me, like other people, have experience with, with seeing um, and feeling and knowing that there is a God who is connected with us, who has a real connection with us. This Jesus came to this world to reconnect us with each other, but also with God. And this God came to this world to die for everything that's wrong in our lives, for every wrong thing we're doing, um, all the sins we are doing. And he's just taken that away and he died for that. And now he's offering something better. He's offering a relationship with himself. And the question is, how do you respond? And for this, I want to take you back again to the circle around Jesus. Because I think that there can be three ways to uh, deal with this. Maybe you're just sitting there, standing there and thinking, I'm skeptical. I don't believe this, it's not for me. Um, thank you very much. I really want to thank you for joining this event. And I also want to um, challenge you. Um, we have some covers. There is an ancient biography of Jesus. If you want one, you can have it for free. You just can leave your um, address in the feedback form. Uh, so please fill it in if you'd like to check it out for yourself. If you want to investigate, um, you can have it for free. No strings attached. Um, but it's also possible he's standing there and thinking, I like to yeah, investigate. I like to try out this cloak. Maybe this Jesus has some power. Um, I want to take a closer look on it. If that's you, and you're thinking, okay, I'll tell me more about this, um, that's also possible. You can leave your phone number in the feedback form, and uh, somebody will contact you of the organization team, and um, yeah, we'll share more about what's going on and how you can investigate, maybe together, uh, or talk further about other questions. So you're very welcome also to do that. But it's also possible um, that you're thinking, like that woman, I want a new for this person. I want a new for this God. I want to be in that relationship with this God at this moment. I'm longing for that. If you like to be in that relationship, it's also possible to start with that tonight. And um, I also want to uh, encourage you, please leave your details also in the feedback form. So we can get in contact with you and explain uh, what you can do more. Um, but for now, I really want to thank you for listening. Uh, we will go to uh, Q&A in a minute. Uh, so please also send all your questions to Sly and Do uh, hashtag question. Um, so I can try to answer them as good as possible. And uh, please also fill in the feedback form. It's really helpful for us to have some feedback on the events, how we can improve, how we can make it better. Uh, so thank you so much.